Hello, everybody. This is Tito Bort. I am CEO at Alti Sales, and I'm here for another SDR Superstar series. This is going to be a really exciting one. We're going to be learning about some techniques and methods to use on LinkedIn, uh, how to nurture your leads over time and really um, get the most out of your prospects to get as many meetings as possible. And for that, we have uh, one of the top performers uh, that I've met uh, recently. Is uh, it is Daniil Kretz from Skillshare. How are you, man? How are you doing? You're doing great, Tito. Thanks, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate that. Of course. I'm really excited to talk today. It seems like you have good content for everybody. It's going to be, uh, going to be fun. Um, and one thing I, I love doing for people is starting with a little bit of like um, context, right? Uh, different SDRs for different average deal size work different ways. Uh, not doesn't necessarily mean that whatever you do works for other people. So why don't you tell us really briefly what Skillshare is and then, you know, average deal size or segment you're going after just so people understand a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Skillshare is the leading product education platform for high growth SaaS companies uh, that basically helps customer facing teams drive product adoption, decrease churn, streamline onboarding and implementation and reduce how to support tickets. Basically, we help um, our customers train their customers on their products and services. And so our, our typical personas that we work with are customer facing teams, uh, customer success, implementation, education services, client services, customer support. So these are, these are the people that we uh, primarily talk to every day on the phones and reach out to. Uh, as far as the company size, we pretty much work with every company size, uh, but m it's mostly operas in the mid-market and, uh, and enterprise as well. Okay, perfect, great. Um, that sounds awesome, man. So, so it makes sense. Let me, let me ask you a little bit more about your work. I want to dissect, obviously, what you're doing day to day, what your workflows are, and then we're going to dive deeper into specific techniques and methods. So um, when it comes to inbound and outbound, how are you split there? Do you do both? Do you only do one of those? Yeah, I mean, historically, with, uh, when I started a year ago, we've been uh, doing mostly inbound, but then we moved into outbound direction. So Last few months, I've been, I guess the ratio is 80% outbound, 20% inbound. Okay, perfect. And then you're destroying quota. I mean, you are uh, averaging about 160%. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I've had a really successful summer and start to the fall. Uh, so, I mean, we've, we're, we're obviously measuring every step of the funnel, uh, but we're comped on the opportunity. So basically... Whenever the meeting I schedule uh, gets converted into an opportunity, I get paid on that. And our monthly quota is seven opportunities. So uh, this summer, I averaged anywhere from 11 to 14 opportunities. Uh, September, I did nine. So basically, it's anywhere, anywhere from 120% to 200%. Like August was really successful in that respect. And in terms of meetings, uh, I did uh, 35 in July. That was kind of my personal record, and uh, I typically do over uh, over 15. I guess September it was 18, and the average in the last four or five months was about 28. So um, 25, 30, 35 is like anywhere in, along those numbers is what I what I've been doing recently. That's awesome. I mean, 25 to 35 sounds like one to two a day, uh, which is high volume compared to like most SDRs I talk to. So let's start dissecting your work. Um, one of the things that we were chatting briefly about before this interview is a little bit of the work you do on LinkedIn and on your target accounts and so on. So can you first explain a little bit more how that works and then we can maybe dive deeper, do a screen share, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess... Uh, I do a mix of every channel that a typical SDR out there does. So it's, it's email, phones, um, social. I do some videos sometimes as well. Uh, but I, uh, 
I figured that in order to actually stand out and, uh, you know, be successful, I, I need to get creative and then find other ways to find people that I can convert fast that are actively evaluating. And so I think LinkedIn uh, has been uh, really helpful and has been helping me to drive additional numbers, additional meetings uh, into my pipeline that convert faster than, you know, regular cold outbound outreach. So two uh, things that really help me is content search on LinkedIn. So typically that's, that's kind of relevant to my industry and I'm sure there are others where this is relevant, but a lot of the times people ask, when they evaluate tools, they ask their network what they're using, what they loved using and what they recommend. And a lot, a lot of the times they either use specific keywords that I'm looking for, or um, they use, use hashtags for other people to find these questions and comment on them. So uh, I've been using specific keywords, like for my industry in customer education, we fall under the LMS umbrella, though our use case, case is a little different. It's geared towards external education rather than typical LMS. So I've been using hashtags like LMS, learning management system, customer training, customer education, uh, and so on, and running reports typically twice a day on uh, those keywords and finding people that are actively evaluating. Another great resource for me that actually helps. And before, before we go deeper, like, how do you mean, what do you mean running reports? Like, can you show us some of this? Because like, I have no idea how to yes. do that. And you're talking about it like it's a piece of cake. <laughs> yeah, of course. Let me, let me just cast my screen real quick. Uh, and I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff and how, like my framework basically to do that. Uh... Yeah, I think, I think that's going to be super exciting for the audience. I mean, um, during, during this series for the people who's their first time watching, we've, I think we've had like 12 or 15 or something like that, a, a bunch of them. And we've talked about things like how to organize your, your calls, your emails, your social outreach and so on. So. Uh, we'll, we'll see what magic you bring us today. Yeah, do you see my screen now? Yep, I see it. Seems like a job for customer education. Yeah, exactly. So like our primary audience is customer education folks. So uh, you can leverage LinkedIn in different ways. And one of the ways is like one of the ways people do that is they're actually looking for a job on LinkedIn, right? So I figured that I can do the same thing and find companies that are bringing, uh, bringing new people and customer education folks in. And what that means typically, typically is uh, there is an active initiative to create a customer onboarding or education platform uh, for the external audience. Uh, it's either happening right now and they're evaluating tools while hiring for this role or they're hiring and they will be evaluating tools when, once they find the right person. So what I've been doing is I've been uh, looking up customer education roles uh, on LinkedIn and um, here's, here's what the filtering looks like for that. So basically I look for the recent job posts, full-time jobs. You can refine the search by industry that's what I'd recommend. So in my case, we work with high growth SaaS companies. So I typically do computer software, internet, financial services sometimes is kind of our, our sweet spot as well. Information technology, computer net network security, right? So primary job functions for my uh, ideal buyers are training and education. And this is kind of how you can refine the search. Uh, and this is this is relevant for our SDR role. Uh, this is basically all you need. You can also not refine the search. I found that a lot of the times job postings don't uh, contain these categories, like right. So HR people don't necessarily use these categories for job description. They just post the the actual description. So I recommend doing both, right? And I'll show you okay. the difference. What so like. so should, th l let me let me dive deeper here. So this customer education search you've done is looking within the description of the job post and looking at customer education as a as a, as a keyword or because why are you selecting training and education? Like, 
Uh, oh, I'm going to explain why, right? So let me okay. close the filters here. Uh, so these are the roles that are coming up here and some of the titles, Senior Director of Users Education, uh, like we see Education and Training Manager. So let me just open like this role at Webroot, which is a computer network security company. Uh, so let me show you like the framework. So when you find an ideal role that you're looking for in LinkedIn, uh, yeah. and you, sorry, it's loading, obviously slow when I need to load fast. Uh, you look up the job functions and you can see here that it's training and education. If uh, I have a bunch of other roles, they will all have training and education. So your goal is to find like, let's say five to 10 ideal job postings. Let's say for the companies that are already customers that are hiring for the titles you work with and open them on LinkedIn and see what industries they post for, right? And uh, what job functions they include. And based on that, you include that into filters and run that search, right? If we go back to my filters, you'll see exactly the same data, same industries and same job functions, right? And so what yeah. that helps with is when I know uh, that someone is looking for an education and training manager, I can read everything I need in the description. So the company is seeking a worldwide partner education training manager. This is what Skilljar is built for. This position will report to vice president customer success. That's all you need. This is my guy or, or gal at this company that I need to reach out to. You go back. Uh, they have they must have an lms in place already or they're planning to implement one because there are these keywords lms here uh you can read all about the role and customize based on that a lot of the times for uh you know uh individual comp contributor roles like knowledge manager or instructional designer it will also contain the all the stack tech stack that the role is supposed to work with, right? So I, I will know like all the integration my product has and how this is relevant to the tech stack that the company already has in place. And I can build on that and build my outbound outreach on that, right? That so, is genius. So if we go and uh, look at the role here at um, Hootsuite and check it out, um, like, I can see the same information right away and it's all laid out. So I don't, don't really even need to go to the website. If I know, like in my case, this is a computer software company. Uh, it's a marketing automation tool. They obviously need to train their users for faster adoption, right? So this is the right ICP and same thing, same industry, job functions, education and training. And I can read about the role here how much experience they're looking for. A lot of the times it also has the goals for the role. So you know if that kind of falls onto what, uh, under what your product can do, you can explain why this is relevant to prospect as well. And here is who this role is gonna report to. Here's who I'm gonna reach out and I'm just gonna say, hey, I see you're hiring a senior director of user education. I see these are the goals. This is the tech stack you guys are using right now. Here's why Skilljar is relevant and what we do. If you're looking for someone, it means it's either a new initiative or you have something in place. Would it make sense to connect and evaluate Skilljar? So this is kind of my messaging. That shows that I've done more research than an average SDR that probably sent an email to the SVP of product and technology. And so it's, it makes it way warmer, right, than a regular cold email. Yeah. And anyway, cool. Anything you want me to clarify here before I go to the um, uh, hashtags and, and, and other way to leverage LinkedIn? Nah, this is awesome. This is, this is really cool. I think that people who are watching this are going to start looking at job posts and they're going to start getting creative. Um, even I think, I think I need to start doing a little bit more of this internally with my team. I don't think we teach them to go um, search for accounts this way. Now, now tell me a little bit more about your targeting because some people are constrained with territories or, or they 
-hmm. they're they only have like 10 target accounts or 50 target accounts or 500 target accounts they can't just go book anybody or everybody so you go look for hootsuite because they're a target account and you try to find somebody or it seems like you just did a generic search for mm -hmm. you know uh what was it like customer education or or yeah it was it was customer education this is this is a great question tito so uh in a lot of cases i do that to find new accounts and like for new accounts when i when i look for new accounts to add to my pipeline and start working right uh for the target accounts i highly recommend just following them on linkedin because uh, and and also another like kind of a pro tip is if you have 50 or 10 target accounts it won't hurt for you to actually follow the hr or recruiters of that company on linkedin because they are kind of the brand builders on linkedin they share the most relevant and important information about the company that can be relevant for you so you know starting starting with that would be a huge step in the right direction of finding the the way to get the foot in the door because i can provide an example where there was uh, one company that that had like most of the people working remote so it's uh, it's a nightmare for an adr where you can't find the numbers you only have the email and it's it's really hard to reach the people that work remotely in a lot of cases especially with several offices or when everyone is spread out around the world um, so I followed the company on LinkedIn and I wasn't able to get a response via email and I uh, their product team posted uh, their user experience research on on their LinkedIn profile and asked for people that are following the company to go through like a document that you need to sign recorded via loom and then uh, share your feedback right so the product manager that posted this had a keyword learning in his role description on LinkedIn and so I did the exercise I reached out to him to him saying like hey uh, I hope this is helpful and I wanted to ask for a small favor I've been trying to connect with you guys because I saw that you have a bunch of resources on your website for your customers but there is no centralized learning destination where your customers could go to and you know uh, get educated on your product so I thought this would be relevant and I, right. I would appreciate if you could point me in the right direction, right? So uh, that allowed me to schedule the meeting. And I also actually got a gift card for uh, doing the exercise. So that, that worked out really, really well. But um, uh, whenever I, I run these, these searches um, a, a couple of times a day or um, every, every second day, and whenever I see that the company is hiring, but it's not in my territory, I just tag the... ADR and AEs, uh, ADRs and AEs that work this specific account in Chatter on Salesforce. And I post this and say, hey, there is information about the stack, the decision maker, a good way to reach out. So yeah. if it's not something that I can work and someone else is already working, I'll just try to help my teammates. Uh, but in a lot of cases, I find new accounts. Like we have a fairly small ADR team right now, we're just eight people. So there is some space for us, right, to explore new accounts at this point for like high, um, high growth organizations that have like 150 SDRs. I know those are out there. It's, it's probably tough to find new accounts using this method, but I feel like for um, teams of this size, it, it's, it's relevant. Okay, perfect. Let's, let's dive deeper into the LMS uh, search that we have there. What what you do here and why yeah so uh here is do you really like when you look for a customer success the, the customer training or customer education search did you really just type it in the in the search bar i thought that search bar was to search for people but that found you yeah, jobs absolutely. right that's the thing right so you can search for everything on linkedin you can search for people jobs companies and whatnot right so in my case i search for content here and you can refine the search and see who it is posted by the date posted and also pick the right industries but in my case i this is a new category not a lot of people ask these questions publicly like for example i would imagine if if people look for sales automation tools 
where salespeople are extremely active on LinkedIn, they would ask these kinds of questions on a daily basis and you would see those pop up every day. And so you would want to jump on these fast. Uh, but in my case, not a lot of people do that, but when they do, it's mostly people that will convert fast. So I'm looking for those, right? And um, just to kind of take a step back here, if you, if you look for the hashtags, you won't necessarily, uh, and you don't necessarily find a lot of people that are like asking specific questions. You can also find a lot of relevant information, right? Uh, subject matter experts talking about this, uh, these, you know, discussing industry topics, your competitors posting on LinkedIn. So there is a lot of relevant information just in case you don't find specific people that are actively evaluating. It's worth doing uh, either way. But uh, I'm, what I'm looking here is looking for here is the hashtag uh, LMS. So that's kind of the industry term we fall under. And so if I scroll down, I see, so this is a competitor posting about the new blog post, right? Uh, same person from the competitor company. Like there is, there is sometimes there is not a lot of relevant information, but just for the sake of time, I will just show you what I was able to find like in the last couple of months, right? And the questions that people ask on LinkedIn just to prove that this is work, this is working, right? So this is something that I found on Sunday night this week. Uh, this is the lady that is in marketing and she's asking uh, about recommendations for an LMS. Sorry, this is loading not fast enough again. So we are exploring both PIM and LMS software solutions for those with direct experience. What is the best PIM you have used and why or the, the LMS, right? And this is my post here. Um, Hi, Gail. I'd be curious to learn more about what you're trying to achieve with an LMS and your training audience. I'll send over a connection request, get a quick email your way. And so I did that beginning of the week. She referred me to the education person that is leading the evaluation and I have a meeting with her tomorrow. Awesome. Right. And then this doesn't seem to have a hashtag LMS. Yes. So great point. So how'd uh, you find this? Yeah, based on my experience, I run the search on hashtags and also keywords without the hashtag. So in this case, what I did, I just typed LMS here. So it doesn't necessarily, it, it, it works both ways. You can, I recommend running the search on hashtags and also the specific keywords, right? Um, so in this case, there is no hashtags, but there is a word LMS, which so is- Show me, can you, can you just do that for me on your screen right now? Can you just, yeah, can you just do like quotation mark LMS? Uh, so I type in LMS, I, I type see all results, the results for LMS, and then I go to content. Man, I'm shocked. I'm going to get so many more meetings from this crap. This is amazing. Yeah. So a lot of the times, like this is some job posting, right? But it still might be someone looking for the right person for their team and their company might be an ICP, right? So this is still beneficial. Like this is uh, one of the thought leaders in the industry. Like, so I found this because it has LMS, right? So this is like an article about the extended enterprise LMS. Uh, I mean, what else is out there? Yeah, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta scroll down a bit and then obviously it's funny because LMS uh, kind of have more than one meaning, right? But but if my keyword is like uh, Kubernetes cybersecurity or whatever crazy thing like that, like mm -hmm. it's much more specific, right? So yeah. I, I feel like this would be very useful. Like you don't even have the ideal use case for this and you're leveraging it and getting meetings out of it. You just found a post of somebody who had like four likes and you were the only comment. Like that lady posted it out there really hoping that somebody would sell her on something. Here's yeah. another one. Like, this is great. He's even a third plus connection. So he's not even like remotely connected to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so this is, this is someone looking and they even elaborate on specific, uh, you know, specific needs and stuff, right? So there is external training right there. So I jumped right on it. Uh, another, um, another person that I connected with, I actually got an op 
out of this uh, back in July or August, I believe. He's, uh, he's been very specific. A lot of the times, like the ADRs from competitor companies are finding these uh, and they post basically the same thing asking like for, for uh, getting connected and asking for a meeting. So we want to jump on these fast. And there is a, a pro tip that I wanted to share is I also follow the ADRs from competitor companies that do the same thing. There are some of them. And whenever I don't find some stuff, they have, they probably might be using other keywords or, you know, other ways to find this. And so I just follow them on LinkedIn and check their profile on a daily basis to find what they were able to find. And I jump on it as well. So Man, you're, you're such a creep, but this is awesome. <laughs> but it works. I mean, I know that's kind of creepy, but it does work. And um, I got to say, like, not all the people um, react positively to it, right? A lot of the times when people ask for a recommendation from their network and they get blasted by people like, like myself, uh, you know, through email and, and phone calls, uh, they don't react to that positively, but that doesn't happen very often. I, I've heard people telling me on the phone that I reached out to that company and requested a demo and they didn't even respond to me. And you found me on LinkedIn and gave me a call. And I really appreciate that. Right. So yeah. uh, sometimes like people won't respond positively to that, but You'll, you'll hear good things about yourself uh, in a lot of cases, right? So in this case, this uh, uh, person, he's not at the company anymore. He actually moved to another role, but he's seeking recommendations for an LMS for software training to track internal and external learners, right? So that's my use case. Yeah. Uh, this so is awesome. This that's, is that's what I've been doing. Yeah. 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 And, and the other thing you were saying is, you know, on social, some people might be apprehensive about like an SDR reaching out because they're like asking their network, you're not part of the network. Why are you commenting on this? Whatever. But many times what I've seen other SDRs do is just like give them a call or send them an email uh, that says something in the lines of like, hey, Daryl, I've been pointed in your direction when it comes to uh, training both internal and external users. Uh, they said you'd be the best person to speak with. Is that something you're interested in learning more? And then just like, they just posted on LinkedIn saying they want to. So like, rather than commenting on LinkedIn, just send yeah. them an email or give them a call and just mention that you've been pointed in their direction. Uh, yeah. and, and then they'll be like, oh yeah, perfect timing. Yeah, guess yeah. what? Obviously yeah. I saw your LinkedIn post, but but you know, some people feel like they're being a little bit too invaded when you comment on it. So there's other ways for all those sure. listening. You don't, you yeah, don't I mean, have like to do it. Like you mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, there is no silver bullet, right? This might work in several industries. There are industries that that's not going to work in, right? Like the RFP heavy products or industries, like people working with enterprise, that's probably going to be tougher to find these kinds of questions. But uh, for me, this works. Like in this case, there is someone looking for an LMS. So I got to qualify this a little bit more because I don't know the audience, but you can click on the name and like see uh, supplier relationships. That's probably partner management or partner, partner education. So that are, that's our use case as well. So I would reach out as well. And to your point, I see a lot of ADRs. If I ever see someone commenting like in this case there's a bunch of other people offering their products if you scroll down right yep. that's a, like it happens sometimes uh but what they do is they send a connection request and they say hey do check out this lms right and like even people when they're even actively evaluating they're not going to reach out to you even if you like connect with them on linkedin you've got to like take a few steps further and like what i do I send the connection request, I comment, I like the post, and I send over an email with more information because in a world where there is a lot of competition, I want to send an email right away. Like I want to use every channel and leverage every way to get through the noise because it's, it's you know how tough the job is, right? So um, uh, if you have any chance or any extra channel that you can leverage, you, should, you totally should. Yeah. So tell me about these, like you're, you're setting up 25 to 35 meetings a month. How right. many of those are coming from job posts and LMS searches and LMS like keywords? 
-hmm. Is that like 50%, 30%, 70%, like 90%? Yeah, uh, good question. I would say 30% or less, right? That's obviously like an extra extra channel or extra way to find uh, people that convert fast in month because it being comped on uh, the uh, ops that convert or meetings that convert into ops, right? Uh, in a lot of cases, it takes... Uh, more time to get access to executive leadership, right? Or like identify the budget and stuff like that. So I need to make sure that I work both ways. Uh, part of the reason I'm successful is uh, I work uh, a lot of, I do a lot of nurture plays where whether I have a positive or negative connect with someone, if I'm sure that this is an ICP in the right title and someone that will absolutely, absolutely benefit from a product like Skilljar. I just stay on it for at least another six months and I reach out every 25, 30 days and I send a link to our webinar. Like in my case, it's really easy because our marketing team produces a lot of content. We have a webinar every month, a lot of eBooks. So I take notes, I try to figure out what's relevant based on LinkedIn role description, the company, the industry, and I try to send that content to stay top of mind because uh, I mean, we both know that there is no industry where there is a single player. There is always an evaluation and you need to stay top of mind. We work with a lot of startups, right? Uh, and uh, uh, priorities change in SaaS so fast. I've seen so many cases when, like I got an op in August and I connected with the decision maker I believe in May and they said, well, try reaching out in December. I stayed on it. I, re I sent a webinar invite on, in August and they responded saying, hey, pr our priorities have changed and uh, we need to evaluate this right now. Can we get a demo like next week, right? And so uh, I feel like a lot of newer ADRs, they concentrate on quick wins because they think how this works and uh, you need to concentrate on actually creating pipeline because right. this is what will help you create repetitive results. So do you have, it seems like you're anybody who you're having a, a, some sort of interaction, you're going to stick around for another six months. Do you have like a sequence that sends an email every 25 months uh, on outreach and it's a predetermined sequence or you just have like tasks to remind you? Do you yeah. put in calls as well or are you just, uh, it's a nurture email campaign? Yeah, it's, it's typically a nurture email campaign, right? Yeah. If someone responds positively and says, uh, talk to me in three months, I obviously make a note uh, to reach out in, in three months and I just do that, that manually. But you can create a sequence in outreach which will have the task pop up for you every 25 days. And you can choose whether to call or email or like send a LinkedIn message just based on the interaction that you had in the past with that specific prospect. And another benefit to this, people change roles every year or two, right? And uh, that's a good way to control that as well because when you uh, get some sort of response or feedback that, will, that makes you think you're going to get a meeting at some point in the next six months, you actually go back to this conversation, see if the person is still there, and like, you know, a lot of the times they tell you reach out to me in January next year, but they're no longer there. And you've, you, you've lost your time and opportunity to find the person that just joined the company where you can say, hey, I know you just joined, but I've talked to this person. He just left. And we had a few conversations about how their team can leverage a tool like Skilljar. I know you're new. Congrats on your new role. But uh, do you think it would be worth talking in like next couple of weeks once you ramp up, right? So that's... Is, is the way you know they've left because you get a bounced email or are you creating yourself a task to find them on LinkedIn or, or, or you'll email manual and then when you see that they, you get a trigger the email, you go on LinkedIn, like what's your workflow? Uh, the latter. So I typically... Emails have, manual. Yeah, okay. Manual tasks. So... If I don't see that the LinkedIn is updated, I send an email. If it bounces, I know the LinkedIn is not updated, so I got to start searching. Uh, if I see the, the LinkedIn is updated, I make a task to look at the company profile in LinkedIn Sales Navigator in 30 days. 
And when I go back, I see the new hires in the last 30 days. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I can see that they found a new person, right? So there are several, like three workflows that you mentioned, they all work, right? Yeah. Um, you can do both manually. You can put them into the nurture sequence that will uh, send, like have you send an email every 30 days in the next six months. There are different ways of doing it. Um, I typically do it manually, to be honest, uh, just because that works and it, it's, it's easier for me personally. I make a lot of written notes and stuff like that, so uh, yeah. I still live in the past. <laughs> but, uh, but that works for me, and I mean, you obviously can automate that stuff. Yeah, we're running out of time. I know uh, it's, uh, it's almost the top of the hour here. Um, and yeah. you've given tremendous information here, everything regarding, man, all, all these searches on both jobs and content and hashtags and so on. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. Maybe um, one thing that you mentioned is you use a lot of like these snippets. Um, so before we get, dive into snippets, so we might dive into that for a minute or two. Tell us about your text tag. So are you using... Salesforce, using outreach, using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, anything else in there? Yeah, so our stack is pretty typical. It's Salesforce, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, outreach. We use Chorus to report all the calls. Uh, Zoom Info, uh, these, these are the tools that we're primarily using for our outreach, either um, inbound or outbound. Okay, and then within outreach, you seem to be using snippets. So you're yeah. creating these sequences of manual emails. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I love to do is below this video in the, in the LinkedIn blog post, if you're watching this on YouTube, find me on LinkedIn, Tito Port, and go watch it on, uh, on LinkedIn. Below this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste a few, of the, uh, a few of the snippets that you can send me, just so people understand like, what sort of customizations you're doing. I assume you're just leveraging things from the blog post or the, the yeah. post and so on and saying, hey, I saw you're hiring for title, you know, blah, 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 some of the skills necessary are whatever else, and you're just making it that way. Yeah, yeah, I have a, uh, so every time our marketing team releases new content, I create a snippet with a specific case study, and I name it like customer success and title, for example. So I just find the, rel the content that is relevant for specific uh, industries and titles, and I use it in my manual outreach uh, so like the typical framework, if it's a larger account, I would use generic sequences, like for the people that I'm not very likely to get uh, the response from, but that might help me get the foot in the door. And I narrow down the list to the typical titles that I want to talk to and get a response from. And I try to customize the research, uh, I'm sorry, the outreach as, as, as much as possible. And, um, Typically, I have the framework for, for the first email, which is essentially, um, I've been researching your organization. Here is why. Here is uh, um, like why I'm reaching out to you specifically. Uh, I thought this is relevant. This is what SkillJar does. And uh, would it be beneficial to unpack more and identify where a SkillJar can add value, right? And then I follow up. Typically, like for outbound, I do like a cadence of two emails, two calls with voicemails per week. Uh, and for inbound, it's, you know, more of a, um, I reach out more often, typically like every second day at least. Um, so I, I'm happy to post a, a bunch of snippets. Um, uh, I've been using, so I have the snippets for the first email, a bunch of contact, uh, content, content. I typically have snippets for each persona in title that outline typical problems that uh, our product solves. Like, hey, Tito, whenever I talk to sales professionals like yourselves with similar titles in this industry, we talk about these things that are top of mind for this specific role. Uh, are these top of mind for your team right now? And would it be beneficial to share our experience helping similar teams in organizations create best in class customer education experience, something like yeah. that. And I also use challenger snippets, which is based on the situation. If like you want to like whenever you receive a hard no, you want to respond fast and challenge the response. So I typically send over like a quick snippet saying like, is this the something you've already solved for? Or uh, uh, you don't have a need right now, and this is the reason why you responded that way. 
in a lot of cases, when people send me a hard no, I ask, hey, I know like my messaging has prob hasn't probably been relevant or this is the, time the timing isn't right. Is there anything that I could, that I could have done better? Because I want to learn from this experience and I would appreciate your feedback. So Perfect. People Excellent. I, I got to run because we're at the top of the hour, man. I appreciate you've shared uh, yeah. tremendous content. So for, for anybody watching this, if you want to connect with, uh, with any of us, uh, me, just find me on LinkedIn. I post a lot of these interviews. They're a lot of fun. And then Daniel will find you also on LinkedIn, connect with you there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to, happy to connect and be a resource for uh, the SDR community. Awesome. Thanks everybody for coming to the show. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a lot. Uh, post your comments, questions, everything below. And uh, yeah, expect uh, another one coming soon. Thanks everybody. Take care, Tito. Thanks for having me.